So come with me, we've got some things to configure today. This is very exciting stuff because uh, this is all stuff for the new house. Excuse my garage, this is where I just keep all of my networking things. Um, so we need to go over here, careful of the, of the wet floor. Um, we need to pick up a few things to configure for the new house. We need a couple of wireless access points as to which I should have two of these for the new house to cover the whole place, which we do there, tiny little access points. I should have a rather large network switch that I need to configure. This is the 24 port network switch, which we need to configure. Uh, so there's our access ports two, and then we need our router or router, uh, which is this big badger here. We are going totally overkill with the home network at the new house. So there we go, two access points, a switch and a router, which gives us a whole network. We need to get this all configured. This is part one of Alex's new house home network tour thing. Let's configure. So guys, what we're going to do is get ourselves off to the office so we've got our nice set to record this so I can talk you through the equipment choices, why I'm using this gear. Let's get to the set. So guys, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and configure my whole networking setup. This is gonna be my router, my switch, and my wireless access, as to which I've got two access points. And I'm gonna go through this and explain what each part is as we go along. So let's start, guys, right from the start. Whilst I'm unboxing my massive, massive, massive router right now, I'm gonna go ahead and explain why I use and always use this Unify gear, because I know I'm gonna get questions saying, Alex, why, why do you keep going back to this stuff? Why, 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 why do you not use Cisco? Why why do you not use this? Why do you not use that? And the simple fact is, I like things easy and I like things to work. And I also, with networking gear, because network goes, networks go down all the time, I like things when they're really easy to troubleshoot and, and fix if, the, if there's a problem. So that is why I'm really fond of this Unify gear. It all has a web interface. It's very, 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 very reliable. I've used this and installed it for clients all over the world. And this is my brand new router, router. This is the Unify Security Gateway Pro. Now they also make a little smaller router, which I currently use at home, but as soon as Ubiquiti sent all of this out to me to do this video, I just said to them, look, send me all of the top end stuff. So they did. And by the way, this isn't sponsored. They've just sent me out the gear as to which I can do and say what I like with. So take my word for everything I say with this gear. It's very, very good. I will tell you guys its flaws and its positives. So there is the router. We have a console port here, a blue status light. We have our LAN 1 and LAN 2 port. We've only got two LAN ports on this, so you need to get yourself a switch. We also have a dual WAN port, so you can have what's called a WAN failover, so you can have one network connection in, and then if the router, router, detects that this connection goes down, it can fall over to a backup connection, which is absolutely awesome. And then we also have two SFP ports here. These are fiber ports. SFP is fiber. You plug fiber into these. I wouldn't be using Using that because I won't have a fiber connection going to my new house. So that's all brilliant and that will work by itself but what we need uh, is a network switch. This, this is the Unify switch 24 port 250 watt. What did you say? Yeah 250 watt. Now the reason it has that 250 watt standpoint, oh my god it's huge, is because basically uh, with this switch and I need all these ports by the way, 24 ports let me just create a little bit more space on, on the desk here. The reason, guys, I need all of these ports and the 250 watts of power is because each one of these ports can also supply PoE. Now, PoE stands for Power Over Ethernet. Both of my wireless access points, these two are powered by Power Over Ethernet, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It's so you can run one Ethernet cable between the switch and each of the access points and it will supply the data and the power to keep these things powered up. Well essentially around my new house I'm going to have lots of PoE cameras, CCTV cameras that are going to plug into this switch and are going to need to be powered over Ethernet. That's why I needed this bad boy, 250 watts of power, 24 ports. And as you can see this looks very 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 snazzy right now on top of each other and that's because this is meant to be rack mounted. As you can see it has these things on the side, you mount these in a server cabinet and yes I'm just going and I have a little baby server cabinet in the loft at the new house that's going to serve all of this gear. 
let's get configuring, shall we? So what I'm going to go ahead and do here straight away is from our LAN connection, I'm going to take our LAN connection and I'm going to go straight in to port number one of our 24 port switch right here. Brilliant. Step one, done. Step two, I'm going to take a connection, an Ethernet connection from my laptop and I'm going to plug that into any of the other ports on the switch to give my laptop access to configure all of this gear once we're set up. I've then got this Ethernet cable here which actually has data access. I'm going to bring this round and plug this into WAN 1 to give us some internet into our router. Now what I'm going to do is take some power for the router, router, plug that in there, this thing should start to boot up in a second. And now this is some power for the switch. Let's get this plugged in right here. So guys, now as you can see, we've got our router router here, which is connected into our switch, which is then connected into our laptop. We have given the router router some ethernet here, which has our WAN, our internet out into the world. Now it's time to configure all of this stuff. So what you need to do now is get yourself onto a laptop and simply go to 192.168.1.1 and smash enter. Now the internet in this office is DHCP, so it should have already got as an internet connection right here, but I'm just going to go and make sure that this is all working here. And as you guys can see right here, the setup my Unify gateway is all set up and running and it has a connection. As you can see, congratulations, the gateway is connected to the internet. Now this is where you can go in and configure the internet connection, you can click edit configuration, you can change your connection type, for mine it's DHCP in here. At my house, I'm going to have to reconfigure this step for static IP, as that is what I'll have at the new place. But for now, I'm going to leave it on DHCP because everything should be working. So now what we're going to go ahead and do, guys, is connect both of our access points into the switch here. So now, as you guys can see on here, we've got a couple of flashing lights on the two ports where we plugged in our access points. Now, these are access points that run on PoE that's called AFPOE. Now, pretty much what AF means is that the switch can automatically detect that these require power over Ethernet and supply power. There's no need for me to go into the config and configure the switch to provide 24 volts of PoE to these because these are 24 AF, which means these can tell the switch, hey, I need power, and the switch can automatically send it without any config. So now what are you thinking, Alex, how do you tie all of this stuff together? Well, this is where it gets really interesting. We need a controller that's going to essentially control all of this and manage it all. And what best to do that than the cloud key? Now this is essentially a tiny little computer with an operating system on it, and that operating system is Unify, what all of this equipment needs. Now you can install Unify literally up in the cloud and have all of these devices go out to the cloud and get onto their controller so they can be told what to do. But what I like to do with all of my installations is have the controller local to the network. So that means if the actual internet connection goes out, the WAN connection goes down, all of our devices aren't going to lose connection to their controller, their cloud key. So I like to have this locally on the network if and when possible, even when installing for clients because, well, again, data protection. Clients might not want all of their data going out to the cloud, so best to keep it local. This is the cloud key, simply comes with this Ethernet cable. That goes into there, then you plug it into the switch. Again, it's 24 volt PoE, but this can automatically tell the switch that, hey, I'm AF, I need power. No configuration needed, as you can see, the cloud key is powered up. Couple of things to note with the cloud key, if you don't have a PoE switch that can supply power over ethernet but you still want to power up a cloud key, it has a micro USB at the bottom of it so you can charge it up with that or keep it powered up with that, it doesn't actually have a battery in it but what it does have in it is an 8 gig SD card for all of the backups that it's going to do automatically every week or every month whenever you specify this thing to back up the controller. So now guys the next step is to go onto our computer and what I'm going to go ahead and open up here is the Unify Discovery Tool, the Big 2 Discovery Tool. I'm going to click on Unify Family in the top corner. As you can see, it's found our both of our uh, in-wall pros, which are our access points. It's found our gateway. It's also found our switch. What I'm going to do is click Find Cloud Key, and there you go. It's found our cloud key at 192.168.1.10. So I'm going to click on that, and it's going to open up in Chrome, and then now we have access to configure our cloud key. The first thing I'm going to do is give the cloud key a static, a static IP address because I don't want this floating about in the DHCP range. 
So now guys, you can see I'm on the cloud key. I have the option to configure the cloud key or I have the option to manage the controller. First off, what I'm gonna do is go in and manage the controller and create my cloud, my controller here and configure it up. So it's gonna take me straight into what's called the Unify Wizard. In here, it's gonna say there's a firmware upgrade for the cloud key. I'm just gonna skip that for now. I can do that later. And now I'm just gonna go through the setup, the United Kingdom, select my time code. There we go. I'm gonna click next here. Then it's gonna find all of our our devices as to which I'm gonna click all of them right now and now it's found some of my devices on here it's found the switch and it's found the security gateway the router router so I'm gonna select both of them because I want them to be in my network we'll configure the Wi-Fi stuff later so let's just for now click next and then let's create an SSID for my Wi-Fi I'm just gonna call this for now wireless and I just have the password as I can also enable guest access, but I'm not gonna do that for now. I'll do that later. Let's click next. Now I'm gonna give myself an admin name and a password. My name obviously is Alexander, so I'm gonna do that with a capital A. I'm gonna put my email address in here, Jed blur that out. Gonna give myself a password here, and I'm now gonna click next, and then we're gonna click finish, and we should be set front and center with the Unify controller. First, I'm gonna log into my Unify account. You can skip this bit though. So guys, as you can see here, this is why I love the Unify system. I'm into the cloud key right now. Everything is looking good. This is the first page you get an overview. I can see here that I've got my WAN connected. I've got my LAN connected and I've got two WLANs, which is wireless LAN. And that is obviously these two. We can see everything is green. We've got nothing red. If I was to unplug the WAN port so we gave no internet, this one, the WAN bit would turn red right here. Same with the LAN and the WAN. Now this is the best bit, the reason why I like the Unify the most. If you click on the Devices tab, you can see all of the devices here with all of their respective MAC addresses. And over to the right hand side, you can see that we've got upgrade options on all of these things, which make it so easy to manage. So as you can see here, we've got two access points. What I'm going to go ahead and do is click Locate on the first one, so we can give these two some names. I'm going to click Locate and we'll see, hopefully, one of these, one of these flashing somewhere. There we go, that one is flashing under there. So that is this access point, stop. So what I can go ahead and do is rename this one Elias Kitchen AP. And there we go guys, that is essentially everything all configured. How easy was that? And that is why I love Unify, because it is so, 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 so easy to set all of this gear up. And now we have an enterprise network, which we could easily run an entire office full of hundreds of people on, or it could easily be ran at home, because it's so, so simple, so simple to set up. That is just the basic stuff. You can go into the back end of this Unify stuff and configure everything. You can configure your networks, you can do your routine, and firewall, it's got port forwarding, obviously, like any normal router should have nowadays. Now this, this is one of my most favorite tabs. If you click on the clients tab right here, as you can see, it says Alex's MacBook Pro, and it says how much internet I've used down and how much internet I've used up. We've also got the cloud key here. And as you can see right there, my iPhone X has popped up in here. I can do things like reconnect it, obviously because it's on Wi-Fi if I was having problems, or I can go ahead and block it. This is just an absolutely incredible system and I cannot fault it whatsoever. So guys, I wanna say something to you all right now whilst I go ahead and unplug all of this gear. This video is the first of many where I'm gonna be networking up and doing the whole network in my new house. And this is just part one, configuring the base stuff. We're gonna do videos installing all of this in the new house, guys. So get subscribed if you're new to the channel, you're wanting to know how to set up and do an overkill network, but that is the basics. We're all set up, we have internet, we have Wi-Fi. Now all we've gotta go and do is put this stuff in a rack in the new house, in the loft, run our access points down to the kitchen and the lounge, and we are on our way, on our way to an enterprise network. Number one, really affordable, and number two, really easy to set up. Guys, my name's been Alex, this has been TechFlow. We'll see you in the next one. Adios.